direct metal, laser sintering. Every now and again, a technology comes along that renders the previous technology totally useless. 3D metal printing is one of those breakthroughs. Today we're going to focus on our 3D metal printed partial framework. About two years ago, Utica Dental Lab invested in an EOS M100 DMLS 3D metal printer. That technology has totally revamped our processing for our partial frames. The procedure has completely superseded casting as a whole. The workflow has been simplified and the final product has been made more accurate and with more strength. Partial dentures need to fit the patient in an uncompromising manner while also maintaining aesthetics, the fitting of the client's expectations. Formerly, our frameworks were all cast by hand, a inefficient and work intensive method. Before we get into a comparison of the two methods, let's take a look at what exactly DMLS is and how it works. DMLS, or Direct Metal Laser Sintering, is an additive manufacturing process commonly known as 3D printing. You may have also heard it referred to as SLS, or Selective Laser Sintering, a process which largely amounts to the same thing. This process is typically used both for rapid prototyping and for the creation of small intricate metal parts. DMLS follows the same basic process principles as most 3D printing technologies. Scan, slice, and print. Once a 3D model has been designed, the image is broken down into small slices and the printer adds the material layer by layer until a three-dimensional physical model is made. To start, the DMLS printer hopper is filled with the appropriate metal alloy powder, in this case, a chromium cobalt alloy. The printer hopper is heated up until a point close to the sintering range for the alloy. The build begins by spreading a thin layer of alloy down over the working surface. Then the laser is lowered into position and the path layer is selected. The laser then begins its path, selectively choosing where to sinter the layer and the process for building the model begins. Once the first layer has been completed, a fresh layer of powder is then spread over the top of the previous layer and the next layer of sintering can begin. The process is repeated over and over until a powder alloy material is bonded into a solid model. After the part has cooled for a short while, the metal alloy remaining in the hopper is collected and reused. The last steps for the process include post-processing and finish. DMLS parts can be treated like most other metal processing procedures. The material can be heat treated, further milled, or surface finished. Building an object layer by layer allows an efficient and cost effective method for producing small intricate geometries, both internally and externally. This simply is not possible with subtractive processing such as milling or formative processing such as casting or molding. The technology and innovative thinking that went into designing 3D printing is awe-inspiring and complex. However, the method of which we use this technology is really quite simple. It starts out, as nearly all lab procedures do, with an accurate impression and accurate model. We can use traditional impressions for this. We will pour a good old-fashioned stone model, or we can use an intraoral scan, a full arch intraoral scan all we're going to need is a master model and an opposing model, and depending on how many teeth are remaining, perhaps a bite registration in order to obtain the VDO eccentric relation. Once that information has been determined, our lab tech will begin designing the actual framework. Once the design is completed, the file is sent right on over to the printer, and the printing process begins. After printing, the material will need to be processed a bit further before going on to finish. Music 
You may have heard of SLM procedures before, selective laser melting. Laser sintering differs as the temperature of the alloy does not actually reach its melting point. The alloy is only heated hot enough for it to fuse together, as opposed to melting into one homogeneous mixture. Since the metal is not completely melted, uh, a small microfracture is left behind from the process. These stress fractures would cause weakness in the metal if not properly annealed. Therefore, in order to ensure the metal is strong enough for its purpose, an annealing process is necessary. The annealing process requires the product to be placed in an oven and cooled from 800 degrees down to room temperature slowly. The process removes any internal stresses and strengthens the metal. Once cooled, the framework is removed from its struts and moved on to polishing and finishing. The frames are now ready to be completed as a partial denture utilizing Lusitone 199 acrylic in a press pack method with Kulzer Arctic Key. Once the acrylic is cured, the final prosthesis is polished and sent out to the client. The strength and accuracy of the DMLS process simply cannot be matched by metal casting. Assuming an accurate model is made, the final prosthesis fits the model with next to no adjustment. In fact, remakes for fit have almost completely been eliminated. The additive process also guarantees a uniform application of material. This adds to the structural strength and reduces any need for grinding in any post-production. Additionally, since the process is additive, any unused material can be collected and reused, eliminating waste. There's a reason that we moved the casting equipment to the curb. Laser sintering is superior to casting in every conceivable way. So I really hope you found some of this information insightful. If you did, go ahead and leave us a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll be back shortly to discuss part four of our advancements in digital dentistry series. This one focusing on our All on X Zirconia Arch prosthesis. But until then, this is so long for now.